Beautiful place. You remember the place? I think so, yes. Yes? Yeah. What was it? Uh, it, it, uh, it was for a film that I shot in Trieste. Tri uh, it was in two, 2003 I came here, I think, for the festival, the cinema festival. The start of Wimbledon. Oui, oui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in, in that film they even speak some Slovene, no? Yes, 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 yeah. of course. There was oh. Slovene and uh, actors and yes. Good, good. Um, um, uh, once again, thank you very much, not no. only for giving the opportunity to, oh, to well. show this film. You said John plans this as part of his uh, show, so it's not you, but he is uh, booking it. Uh, thank him on our behalf, but thanks even more for taking the time to share some mm. thoughts on this film and your work uh, with our audience. Maybe just starting... Um, to explain a little bit about the origin of the project, you know, where did it come from, uh, how is it? <laughs> yes, there wasn't supposed to be a film, never. Um, but we met with John because uh, he needed uh, uh, French uh, voices for one of his pieces, The Cantique des Cantiques, and he did it at uh, Jazz à la Villette. It was in 2008, and uh, so he was searching and he, 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 he knew about me, and uh, there was Clotilde M, who is a French actress, so we, we did this, this thing. And uh, one week later, I was supposed to go uh, to New York with uh, Alain René and, um, for his last trip in New York, in fact. And it was a very important city for Alain René, the, film, the French filmmaker who died now, and, uh, and John told me, uh, well, come, call me, call me, well, and I did, I did call him, and it was Yom Kippur that day. That means that it's maybe the only day in the year when John doesn't work, you know. So we walked in the city, and uh, then he said, oh, we're going to go and see Laurie. Well, okay, Laurie, I don't know who is Laurie. And in fact, it was uh, Laurie Anderson, and there was Lou Reed there. And they would just talk about their shoes, you know. Oh, where did you buy your shoes? <laughs> that's all. Uh, they, uh, they didn't. That's all. Then, okay, goodbye. And we, we ate uh, Jewish stuff and just... And then uh, that's, that's just a sort of friendship. And uh, I wouldn't film anything, never. I mean, it wasn't even the idea, nothing. Uh, and then what happened, I think maybe three years later, uh, John told me that Arte wanted to do a portrait of him. And he had met a, a, a director, and he didn't feel the guy. And he said, why don't you do it? Oh, okay. And immediately he says, but next week I'm in Milano for a, a marathon and maybe you can come and you, you film and, oh, okay. Well, so I went there with a sound engineer, Olivier, who is the person who had made me discover uh, Zorn's music long time before I met John. And uh, so we started to film and, uh, and Without you a have, plan or something, just you started to film, without a plan, without no, a project? No, no, ah. saying, okay, then I will write a project for Arte, for the fundings, for things like that, but with, uh, I went there with Les Films du Poisson, who uh, are two women who producer, who produced Tournée, who produced my next film I'm doing, who are friends, you know, and... Uh, <laughs> And you can see some of the images, it's in the Red Theater, all the images that are in the, the, the Red Theater where the sound is quite good because there was a sound engineer, uh, that was in Milano in 2010. And uh, then, uh, in fact, uh, Arte wanted paper, you know, and things like that, and doing a sort of uh, official portrait, or I, I, I couldn't find a, a way to do something. Uh, it wasn't the spirit of John to put him in a, an official portrait of one hour where I would have to explain things or, and put a voice over, I don't know, it, it wasn't that. So, in fact, what happened is I continued to film uh, when we would see each other. 
That's all. Mm -hmm. When I would go to New York, when he would come to Paris, when, I don't know, completely like that, by chance, or, or when I would go in a country, I would ask John uh, with, uh, for example, when I went to Japan for another film, I said, ah, oh, who could I meet? And that's how I met Matsuko, and you know. And, uh, and I, I, I do it, so that, that this is my crew, this is not so long. I have a camera, I have three, uh, three different sounds, uh, three ways of taking sounds. I, it's like a dance, you know. I, I move alone and I, I, I change the sound places and I love doing that. And I'm in the middle of those constellation of musician just creating and searching and rehearsing and uh, being happy to, to see each other again after travels. And very quickly, I don't, there was this feeling that uh, it shouldn't go through words or interviews or explanation. It was the energy. It was just, they, they just do things, that's all. Mm -hmm. And then maybe they analyze something, but then they just... Mm -hmm. And so this first film uh, is like a, a young man amazed uh, to, of his chance to be observing uh, this energy. And, and it really changed my life, in fact, uh, as a filmmaker. Because, but I noticed that afterwards, because a film I did with Jean Balibar on music, Barbara, the film, uh, and... You uh, showed it last uh, Sunday, oh, once again. No, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in fact, I think that the, the fact that it's more a film on somebody working, uh, Barbara working music, but also, in a way, Jeanne uh, working as an actress, a process of work, it comes, I think, from all those years filming uh, people working, because in fact we're beautiful when we work, mm. and especially musicians. Yeah, yeah. But the, you make it sound very easy in a way, but still at one point, you know, you say, okay, you have this 2010, 2016, this is, becomes an, a, a film, but, you know, and then you have a next one which will yeah. be shown, and which is very, very different yeah. in a way. Yeah. So what triggers then this moment where you say, now I have this material and I'll put it... Because John told me in 2016, he said, oh, we're doing something at La Philharmonie, uh, a marathon uh, in Paris, and he said, what, what do you do with your, your images? <laughs> ah, well, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know, maybe you could show something. Oh, yeah, well. And first of all, I had to search for the image. I lost plenty. I don't know where they went. And uh, I lost images I had filmed with uh, music uh, in Israel uh, that uh, John had produced. Uh, I, I lost a lot of images. So with Caroline, the may wonderful editor, because then there's a second, right, the writing is the editing, in fact. And uh, Caroline de Tournay, the editor, is somebody who, who loved John's music. And uh, so we, we sort of took all this material and tried to create it like a, yeah, like a par partition, like a musical score. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm and certainly influenced by how John can work on collapses, uh, collage, uh, f uh, contrast. Mm -hmm. um, and then that was not enough, so to try to find a movement in this first film, and I think I remember we wanted to go to, to something where they finish all listening to each other, because what amazed me is, of course, in fact, John sitting there and listening, and like a trance. It's so beautiful. I mean, the care he has for his musician, the, um, this energy he gives to them, the, this, 
the difficulty of the music he uh, challenged the musician with, mm -hmm. writing them, he's inspired by them. And he, oh, he takes the best in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and then he writes things that are so difficult. Mm -hmm. And they have to surprise themselves. And so it, that's, I remember with Caroline, we, said, we thought that maybe it could finish on those moments where they're all li listening to each other. And I, I remember, I didn't see the film for a long time, but I, we were moved by, uh, by Eric Friedlander playing and people listening, listening to each other. You just answered my next question, ah. because uh, <laughs> that was precisely, the, it, we, this is the last film of the um, uh, music film festival, which we had last weekend, yeah. and there were two films where I pr was particularly struck with these things that uh, in, when we showed a film by Sophie Hubert on the history of Blue Note, the yeah. record label, she was uh, telling how she was struck by uh, how the musicians, especially musicians who improvise, who have a tradition, how they are so much in the present and, uh, how, and anchored in this present and are, that it's all about listening and that even doing an interview with them, that it would show that as a musician, they are people you interview who listen to everything, who hear everything and who respond to everything. And I had very much the same feeling with uh, your film, especially the first one, how it's a film about listening. It's true. Well, listening and, and uh, inventing and creating. And, and so it just you, 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 it gives you a sort of um, courage or uh, in consciousness and also precision because they're just technically <laughs> it's a lot of work the, the technique and the inspiration yeah. the improvising the moment yeah it's funny because the next film the first sentence is uh it will never happen again it will never happen again that's what john says and then the second film you'll see, if you have time to see it, uh, it's shown somewhere else. It, it. uh, it's very different because, of course, I can't continue to be just an observer. So there are words on the screen, words of John, but there is like something uh, where, where does all this filming go in me and how it co comes back? And uh, there's a lot of scenes in Sarajevo uh, that we filmed two years ago in Sarajevo. Am, am I right that I had the feeling that the second film is, has also is much more melancholic and, and is in a way also a bit darker, even if it has all these bursts of energy, it has also some, some sadness which is very profound and very... Yeah. Uh, felt uh, like uh, 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 there is at the end which is it's very true at the end there is something very moving it's maybe because of the organ also because there are moments what John will do tonight at nine uh, the hermetic organ and he has this very solitary uh, relation to one instrument where in fact well sometimes he is with Ikwe but Usually he's alone, and that's true. It has to do with his childhood when he would escape and go in churches and just have fun with this instrument. And the organ is like, in fact, a huge orchestra where he searches for sounds. And it's true that at, at the end, the words that are written, mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're the, 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 the re resistant, the... Uh, the fact that he's out of the system, uh, the economics, the money, the, 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 phew, the courage uh, to continue to try to invent different paths, mm -hmm. it has a cost mm -hmm. on solitude, on, in fact, a spirituality. Maybe there is something more spiritual in the, the, the second that really struck me. And uh, it's, yeah, but it's in a, in a way also like the subtitle of the Blue Note film. It's beyond the notes. It's it oh, goes yeah. completely uh, 
about. There, there is another film, this uh, Carmine Street Guitars, yeah. which we showed, which is about uh, a guy who uh, builds guitars, electric guitars, in the village in New York, and Marc Ribot, yes. another uh, famous, I mean, familiar face in the uh, John Zorn cr uh, crew. Um, talks about this fact that when we speak about the new, when we usually speak about music, we speak about recordings, we speak about performances, but we tend to forget that there is this whole community behind it. That it goes starts with people uh, uh, building guitars, uh, meeting a community, uh, keeping everything going, uh, organizing, um, and this is also, I think, one thing which nice. is that we see in the second mm -hmm. film a lot. Yeah, the, all this, those sentences, all those things that he say, says John uh, on what is musicianship today. And he says it's not just composing and performing. You have to be a, an organizer, you have to have ideas, you have to be a composer, okay, but you have to be somebody that takes care of a troupe. And then he says, uh, it's a bit like Bach, in fact. <laughs> but he doesn't say it in a pretentious mm. way. He says, like, because Bach, what, how did Bach do a, a, a living? It was repairing organs everywhere in Germany. He would go there, and that's how he would repair organs. Mm. And then he had to do a music for the next Sunday, you know? And this thing of continuing, and he has commission because he has a commission, to, he takes care of a group of musicians and they have to make a living. So he has to bring them on tour with him. And, and that's, that's, yeah, Ribot is a lot in the second film. Mm -hmm. It's very funny. <laughs> very funny because he's trying to learn one of the bagatelles, you know. <laughs> it's so difficult. When he's learning the 130, and he, has, he does, and he's talking with Brian Marcella, and, it, and it's funny because, and he says, uh, Mark says, well, when John discovered that we could read music, that's where it became to be the shit for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, and yeah, because uh, maybe yes, yes, the audience. Any questions? Unique opportunity. Uh, Take advantage uh, of it. But it there's not a lot forever. to say. <laughs> yeah. It's just... Uh, uh, oh, this somebody. And then. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, th thank you very much for the film and for being here. Uh, my question is if there would be... A, um, if there would be a feature film of Zorn... Uh -huh. Would you, would you be tempted uh, to play him, <laughs> to portray him? <laughs> oh, God. A, a biopic on John. We should, ask, we should ask John who he would like. I think it would be a, a, a comic actor. He would love that it would be, a, because he's so funny, John, you know. He's really funny, and it would be a more Will Ferrell or people like that, no? <laughs> Crazy actors like that, or a bit more speedy, yeah. Like, like the, the Tex Avery uh, films that he, and all the Staling music, Karl Staling, who was the composer of all the the, the Don, uh, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and all those films that he, he loved as a child. He, it would come from there. Well, actually, he, he threw out his, if you look at all the things, the, the, all his output, there's a lot of film influence. Film is a very, very oh, yeah. important... Oh, yeah. He wrote critics for films also. Mm. With, and he, uh, he, he went a lot at the anthology film archive, the, the place of Jonas Mikas, who, mm. who just died. And we showed film at the anthology with John, of course. And that's why in the second film there, are, and, uh, there are things yeah. <laughs> you'll see from Maya Deren and uh, from Kenneth Anger. And it's funny, I was thinking Kenneth Anger, Anger, Zorn in German means anger, 
la colère, uh, can anger, so, and, uh, and he, he knows how to transform his colère, his anger, into something really, it's extraordinary how he can do this film, this music, like we see at one moment with the dreamers, this sort of very smooth, you know, with Tre Trevor Dunn and, and uh, Volensen, and it's, and then, ah, Cain Pillar, and, and Naked City, and, and Mike Patton, and I mean, that's really also, I would say, in a narrative uh, storytelling for an editing, it's extraordinary, uh, um, exciting mm. to play on those contrasts. I mean, one of the things which you also share is this enormous productivity. I mean, you know, you, you are doing so many things. I mean, uh, how do you you know, meander yourself through all these projects is... Uh, um well, in fact, um, my life is really to fabricate film and write films. That's really where I come from. I started when I was 17 uh, as a trainee, uh, assistant editor, and uh, the food and transportation, and uh, um, assistant director, you know, I did that for... 15 years yep. and um, people of course they what they see on a screen is uh, actors so now uh, since uh, uh, Arnaud Desplechin uh, invented me as an actor people think I do a lot of things but acting it's 20 days in your life you know for a film directing a film writing a film that's another story mm -hmm. That's where I really work, really, really. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I can't resist going to act to, to, uh, when I uh, admire, uh, or with, when it's with friends like the Larieux brothers, or, or when it's uh, Polanski mm -hmm. or Wes Anderson. Or it, is this the main thing so that, that, you, that you believe in the people who yeah, are yeah, inviting you. Yeah, this yeah. is the, more than oh, yeah. the project itself, oh, yeah, no, more yeah. than the... Of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Usually, <laughs> it goes, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's not the character, it's not... Yeah. It's just the person. Community again, in a way, like yes, also yes, yes, musicians. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, yes, and it's really... Uh, that's tr how I try to make my own films. It's always the same bunch of people, the same DOP, the same editor, the same... Yeah. It's the same person. Yeah. And so we just do that. And, and also, the, there's another person in my life that John now writes music for, is an, a singer and a conductor uh, called uh, Barbara Hannigan, and uh, that I also film uh, working. There's one you can see on, on YouTube. Uh, that I did uh, the commission for l'Opéra de Paris, where uh, Barbara Hannigan, who's an amazing soprano, um, prepares her voice. It's really, it's 15 minutes. It's really impressive, very erotic. You don't really know what you're looking. And that I, again, I just alone, because you had to be alone to film something like that. And now John, John wrote uh, music for her, and Steve Gosling, the pianist, he works a lot with. And Barbara was last week in California and with the Jack Quartet, uh, with who John works a lot, performing uh, Zorn's music in a, in a very classic uh, venue, a place where there's only mu classic music, mm -hmm. usually. And it, uh, it, and it would really was beautiful. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. But it's not regarding the music. Yeah. Um, I have the impression that you work on usually mostly the things that you love. So um, recently you were the narrator in the movie in the realm of perfection. Ah, that's Columbia a beautiful film on, uh, with McEnroe. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, from Julien Faro. Uh, can you tell us more about your reasons to participate Why? in this uh, uh, in this project? Because, in fact, that completely by chance, I was in fact I did this film from Gilles Lelouch, where uh, we do uh, synchronized swimming. Uh, it was a big success yeah, yeah. in film in France. It it's a beautiful really film. Yet, Gilles is a wonderful person. Gilles Lelouch, who's more famous as an actor. And he did this film about a bunch of men who are not really in beautiful moments of their life. A bit, uh, you know, uh, depressed and everything. And they just do synchronized swimming for men. And so we had to practice. And so I was at the INSEP. INSEP is the place in Paris where they prepare all the champions, the real Olympic champions. And we were working with the, this woman who would train uh, girls usually, because there's no uh, men uh, <laughs> Olympic team of synchronized swimming. And there was this guy who came and says, oh, I, I work at the Cinematheque of sports, I didn't know it exists. Uh, there's a cinematic with all the documents of, and he said, oh, and he gave me a, a USB, and I said, I, I, I did this thing, and I, if you can do the voice, just look at it, and I looked at it immediately, and the film is extraordinary. So, of course, because I learned a lot of things, I love doing voices, because um, it's like go, going, to a better school than when you were a kid, and I learn a lot of things each time. I learn things on documentaries, doing those voices. And that voice, is, it's a film also on filmmaking, in fact. This, it's a film he did with um, the rushes, the, the dailies of a film that wasn't completely finished, on McEnroe, filmed in 16 millimeter by a guy, a guy called Guy de Carmadec, who would film in the 80, 25 years. He would work for uh, the French Tennis Federation. It was supposed to be tools that could help uh, teaching tennis, you know, doing it better. And then he had this idea that maybe there was no rules. You can't have the perfect gesture. It doesn't exist. So why not film uh, tennis players during a, a, a match to see exactly how they do it? And so he would use a lot of uh, ralenti, a slow motion. Slow motion. Yep. And the images are just incredible. And that last portrait he did, so it would be portrait a bit like Labarthe, André Labarthe, cinéaste de notre temps, but was yep. a tennis player. And it was, it was a film on McEnroe. And it's incredible. It's also about precision, no? <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows how to use anger. Uh. <laughs> it's really not normal how, it's just not normal. Usually you learn how to not burst. Because it's very touching, uh, yeah. film. Yeah. Because also in the, in the Zorn film, I think it's in the second part, you have this on the one hand. It's unbelievable how encouraging he is to his musicians. You know, fucking great, wonderful, beautiful, brilliant, you know, all right on it. Yeah. But can I be surgical? Point 27. Yeah. Please, yeah. uh, please roll only when, yeah. it ra uh, when it's written, roll, yeah. not, <laughs> not at another one. Ah, yeah, so it's this very... Um, that's the moment with the Jack Quartet. And it's Necronomico, it's a so difficult piece. And it's one of the best quatuors in the world, uh, Jack Quartet. And yeah, he just. Oh, yeah, you really have to. Do, and, do you uh, see sometimes when oh, you yeah. are shooting that the uh, motivation goes down? That oh, uh, yeah. I lived it because Barbara now is part of my life. So I saw her receiving uh, that piece and working and just writing him and saying, I think I can't do this. It's too difficult. It, I can't do it. And she's the, the best in, I mean, she knows how to do anything. She thought she couldn't do it. And how John, and then it's maybe if we change this, uh -uh, no, <laughs> we're not gonna change this, but it's impossible. And she did it, she did it. And now she's, 
doing that piece as more as she can. That will be in the third film, because I filmed uh, the moment they created that with Steve with Gosling in Lisbon and then in Den Bosch. So I think that will be part of the third film that uh, I'm starting to edit uh, the 1st of July okay. with Great. Caroline. Yeah. Great. You, you, are, you are also doing a film? Me, I'm doing a, a film of mine yeah. also. Can um, you tell something about it? Oh yeah, well, it's, I hope it will be just a mellow, 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 mellow. Uh, it's love, death, and music. <laughs> and music. It's with uh, uh, Vicky, Vicky Creeps that maybe you saw in uh, Phantom Thread with Daniel De Lewis, the P.T. Anderson film. She's the, the young woman. Yeah. And Arie, Arie Worthalter, who plays the father in Girl. And, uh, but they're not really actors, they're completely savage people. I mean, Arie is somebody that can disappear two years and just walk. Just walk and you don't know where he went. And he went in Quebec, somewhere in Canada, then Nouvelle Orléans, then Peru. For two years he can disappear, just disappear. He's not really an actor. And, and Vicky, she comes from Luxembourg, she grew up in, in a forest. And she has something like that, very animal, very instinctive. And there's children, musician, a, a little girl that becomes a, an amazing pianist. So there's... There's piano, a lot of piano. piano. Yeah. And we, we shoot <laughs> that with the seasons. So I shot, because it's in the mountain, so we shot the melting of the mountain in spring, just now. Then we shoot in November, and then in February for, for the winter, for the, the snow. Yeah. And I edit between. And I like that. You can re rewrite. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you. And I, maybe you have time to see the other one. I don't. It's in the other cinema, right? Yes. Yeah. We have to move. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> thank you so yeah. so much. Thank you. <laughs>